Hey guys, it's Elena. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different and create a, an abstract artwork in Procreate based on a photo, but not based on the photo. I wanted to take this photo of a sea turtle, which is freely available on Unsplash and you can download it at the link in my description. I wanted to take this photo and use the colors from the photo and be inspired by the content of it and um, be inspired by the patterns that I see in it and use that inspiration to create an abstract looking piece that doesn't look anything like it. So let's go ahead and get started and see how this goes. I will be using a photo from Unsplash as inspiration. So I'm swiping up from the bottom and bringing the Unsplash app over to the right side of the screen. And I will be using the sea turtle photo as inspiration. So I want to use those colors. So I've gone to my color palettes and in gallery mode from Unsplash, I'm just going to drag that photo over to my color palettes in order to grab those colors. And I'm just going to rename that sea turtle. So we will mostly just be using the colors. I won't be referencing the photo as I don't really want to have a photo of a sea turtle necessarily. I just want to create something abstract based on those patterns and textures. So I will be using my painterly brush set, which is available for sale in the link below. However, if you have any other brushes in mind that you want to use, you are very welcome to use whatever brushes you prefer to use. And I want you to just use your imagination and explore this idea. So I'm choosing the dark green color. And I think I want to work with the palette knives to begin with. So I'm choosing my streaky palette knife. And I'm just going to play around with the size a little bit. When I first started out, that size was quite large. So I just changed that to a smaller size. And because of the turtle photo having some green on the underside, I'm just kind of adding some green and some greenish blue. And I'm using a very light touch and just kind of letting my hand scribble. So I don't want really precise, perfect strokes. I'm just kind of adding color really randomly. I'm just kind of letting my hand sort of wiggle around and shake around on the screen in order to add those colors in. So now I'm going with a dark green and my dry palette knife to add some different texture and some darker colors in here. And for now, my strokes have been based on the inspired by the water in the photo as kind of smooth strokes, but I wanted to add some texture for a different kind of contrast. And now I'm just adding some lighter color next to the dark green. Again, just contrasting colors, whatever seems to feel right, whatever um, is kind of making me feel interested in the project. And so now I've chosen a very light green color. And I thought about doing a dark green all the way or green or blue all the way around this, this sort of color in the middle because that's kind of what is in the reference photo, but I decided to take it the other direction and have a light background and have the colors in the middle be darker. And so in this way, I'm, I'm inspired by the colors and the textures in the photo, but really so far, this looks nothing like a sea turtle or you know anything that is an actual thing in nature. It's just, um, you know, I'm just going with the colors and the patterns and the textures that inspire me in the photo. And now I've just chosen a light peach color from the palette and I'm continuing with the dry palette knife to add some color randomly. And again, I'm just taking my hand and shaking it around in such a way that it kind of adds color without being very precise. 
choosing a dark turquoise again. I'm just kind of bringing some of the edges of the middle color blob out with this so that it doesn't look like it's hiding underneath of the light colored background. I'm trying not to think too much where I'm adding color. I'm just looking and going with my first instinct of where I want to add color. So now I've chosen the soft palette knife in the same color, the turquoise color. And again, I'm just kind of glancing around. I'm going rather fast and just trying to remove my brain from the process and instead just adding color wherever I feel like adding color, wherever sort of jumps out at me. And I think for intuitive art, it is really important to try to get past your brain a little bit and not think too much about what you are doing, but instead just have, if you have an impulse, just go with it. Nothing bad will happen, especially with digital art. You, you'll follow that impulse and it looks good or it doesn't, but if it doesn't, you can undo it. I don't really su suggest undoing a lot, but for instance, I didn't like that, that what I just did there, that, that um, bold streak, but then I sort of blended it in and I liked it better. So I'm just kind of trying to go with my instinct instead of planning things out just to see where the paintbrushes take me. So now I've chosen white and I'm going back to the dry palette knife. I always like to mix white into my paintings, especially if I'm going for an impressionist painterly look, it can really add depth. So I'm just adding a, with a very light touch, I'm adding some streaks of white here and there. So at this point, I had another look at the photo of the sea turtle, and I decided that I really liked the pattern of these brown circles. So I wanted to recreate that a little bit in my painting. So I chose my soft streaky palette knife in the dark brown color. And I decided to add some of these sort of spots close to each other. Um, I wanted an uneven number of areas that have these spots. So I decided to place them around three different areas of the painting, just a few. And then afterwards, I wanted to go over them with a pen. So I'll show you that as well in just a moment. So I decided that I wanted to use a fine liner pen from my mixed media brush set, which is a separate brush set. There's also a link for that in the description. Um, and I chose from this brush set my toothy fine liner pen towards the top. And the color that I wanted to use was white. So I went to my color wheel and double tapped right close to the white to get that color. And then zooming in on these areas, I wanted to draw around them, but first I added a new layer so that I could keep that separate. So the bottom layer, I'm naming it artwork, and then the top layer is going to be embellishments. So I will just use that as the layer that I will sort of draw around things with this pen, this toothy fine liner. So I, went ahead and took that pen and started outlining the spots that I had just made. And I just went ahead and did that on all of these areas where I'd drawn spots.
And I wanted to outline some of these larger areas as well, even though they're not in the brown color. I just wanted to kind of recreate this look of, of uh, the circles on the flippers and the, the shell of the turtle. So I played around with this idea, tracing around areas that felt like distinct parts of the piece. At this point, I just sort of zoomed out to have a look at the overall piece and kind of came to the conclusion that I wanted to trace the larger areas as well. So I started to draw around wherever it felt right to kind of trace where we've got dark areas and light areas so that they were kind of sectioned off from each other to continue this sectioning look. Something that I liked about this drawing lines around different areas was because it was feeling, the piece was feeling a little bit fuzzy before, like I wasn't sure where the focal point was. And for me, this helps to draw visual interest to that colorful part in the middle. Zooming out again, I'm just going to take this part up at the top and bring that in as well with a line around it. When I zoomed out, I decided that I would like a little bit more color. So I went back to the orangey, orangey brown color. And then I went back to my painterly brush set and chose the super dry brush. And I wanted to have kind of a textural focus right where this brown was up here in the corner. So I had gone back to the artwork layer as well. This is not in the embellishments layer. So I went back to the layer where the colors are mixing with what is already there. And choosing the very dark brown, I just kind of continued to add some texture here. So I wanted to have something a little bit different to have even more of a focal point. So now I'm going back to my soft streaky palette knife and I'm still in the artwork layer and still in this dark color and adding just a few strokes here as well to create even more of a texture focal point. Now I've switched back to white and switched back to the super dry brush. And I wanted to add a bit more texture to this more white area over here. So I'm just adding white to a lot of the outside areas with the super dry brush just to make it look a little bit more textural and add a little bit of interest that is still very subtle. So now I've switched back to my embellishments layer and I've gone to the eraser with the airbrushing brushes and I'm just going to get rid of this little piece right here because I realized that it wasn't looking very good so i'm switching back to my mixed media brush set and the toothy fine liner and i'm just going to fix this line here because i realized that the white was going down much further so i wanted to redo that line that had been made when i kind of first started out doing the lines and i wasn't quite sure where i was going with it 
So I wanted to make that match the rest of what I had done. So that concludes our abstract sea turtle artwork today. And I kind of like how it turned out looking a little bit like everything was just kind of inverted because the light colors were on the outside and the dark was on the inside and the scales were kind of scattered around instead of centered on the sea turtle in the photo. Um, it's really interesting to look at them side by side and kind of see where the inspiration came from. And I really like using this technique if you're stuck with abstract artwork because you can make something that looks nothing like your source photo, but it, you still have something to be inspired by and something to base your decisions from. So I hope this was helpful to you and please do let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you next time.